Hi there, everybody. It's Father Bill for the Friday Reflection. Well, it is most seriously fall, if not going into winter. We just had a whole bunch of days, actually a couple of weeks of rain, and now we're into a kind of a small area, maybe a little about 10 days maybe, uh, of dryness, and it's just gorgeous. This is the time where walking around is so beautiful because of the trees, they're all turning. You can see these trees up here. They're turning gold and all these wonderful, beautiful, radiant colors. Um, that's just what's going on and that's what happens every year, right? And this is so beautiful. When it rains all the time and it's cloudy, you don't get to see these colors as much, but it has been a blessing to have these days to be able to see uh, those kind of things. Now, uh, on the other side here, I have the, this is the uh, olive tree and the, uh, can't really see it, the pear tree there. They don't seem to be getting brown. Well, the olive tree was getting there, but the pear tree still has got a ways to go. It's uh, deciding not to not to kick the bucket quite yet. But, you know, this is part of the, the, the cycle of life, right? We will have winter and the trees will die off. And uh, not die off. They go into hibernation, of course, but the leaves die off. Um, but it's interesting how the church also mirrors some of these things in nature with its liturgical year. So death being one of those right now during November, we are praying for those who have gone before us. You can see the banners that we have up and I ask that you'd pray for them. Hopefully you've written down some names in our book of remembrance. And if you haven't, feel free to do so before mass or maybe even think of this, maybe even uh, write them down on a piece of paper that's already three hole punched and you can just stick it into the book, add it to it. It's a three ring binder anyway, so it makes it real simple. Uh, so those are uh, ways to remember, but uh, I know that for some, this is very recent. We, in the last couple of weeks, have had many funerals. And it's been tough on a lot of people, most especially, of course, the families themselves, right? But it's also been tough on our uh, funeral coordinators and our funeral coordinators, not just for preparation of the funeral, but also for the receptions. And they've been, they've been awesome. They've been stellar. I, it's been a delight to work with all of them, uh, to be around them and just, you know, try to minister to those who are grieving uh, those who are struggling. Uh, and maybe that's you. Maybe you're struggling during this time because the now that we've gone out of daylight savings time, now into standard time, the nights are longer and the days are shorter. But right now we've got a little reprieve. We've got this beautiful, these sunny days right now. Uh, and it's going to get maybe, oh, maybe a whole 10 days. We'll just see. You know how the weather is. You, know, you never know. Uh, but it's interesting. There is a... Uh, uh, I think it's a high or a low. I'm not even sure how, to, how it is, but there's an amazing curve of wind that comes. It was coming right into the Portland area when it was just pouring down rain for us. And now it shifted down to the LA area, which is kind of weird. I use a, an app called Windy or, yeah, Windy. It's a, it's a, it's a website too, windy.com. And it shows these weather patterns and their intensity. And it's, it's amazing how well the, uh, our scientists and meteorologists can predict all these things as they come. But with the advantage, of course, of satellites, right? So we've had lots of funerals, but I want to thank all of you who have been praying for our folks who have had loved ones who have passed away. Um, we will, of course, this is a very important ministry in our parish, uh, but know that the church herself is geared for these things during this time. You'll hear this weekend and then in the next two weekends uh, from texts that sound calamitous apocalyptic and they are and they're what they, they sound like but check this out they're not intended to scare us we may think about fear but if it's fear it's it's an awe in god's majesty but we're not called to be scared or are feared full in that manner of being scared but rather in awe and reverence to our lord who has the power to save us and in fact that is the good news and that is what uh, the church is bringing to us at the end of the liturgical year, which ends at the end of November. I think the last weekend of November is the beginning of Advent, the new liturgical year. But as we do these, and you might hear these readings, um, they may sound strange as we talk about death and dying and people maybe who go to heaven and who don't uh, in the readings. And then we say the gospel of the Lord, right? Well, God wishes all to go to heaven and these are moments for us to really do a gut check about where we are with our lives. And these apocalyptic texts are not intended to be um, prophecies of centuries from now. They're actually written in a time when those things were happening at that time or had just happened. And the writers were trying to encourage people, whether it be from Malachi or Jesus himself. 
Uh, of course, he knew that, for example, calamities would happen. He knew that the, the temple would be destroyed. So if there was a prophecy there, it was very uh, soon to happen after him. Uh, Luke would have actually uh, lived through that. His writings, at the, let's see, the temple was destroyed in 70 and his writings were around 90, something like that, AD. So he had well aware of these calamities personally uh, as a Christian in the world. But we've had people since then who have been martyred for the faith, persecuted for the faith, and it happens now. I posted something on my Facebook page about a woman in Nigeria who was enslaved. And while she was enslaved, she was uh, tortured and her brother was also taken and beheaded in front of her. Uh, and oh, just it's so hard to even think about. So th that's current. That is stuff that's happening today. People who are Christians are being persecuted. Now, hopefully that doesn't ever happen to you, but we all struggle with things like, well, we just had the elections, right? You may or may not be happy about how they turned out. Uh, every election is gonna be a compromise. Jesus is not running for any of these positions. And it is really hard for us to uh, try to speak the truth, the ethics, the morality, and the justice and peace that we as Catholic Christians teach uh, and try to learn to our culture. Because our culture, uh, as John Paul II often would talk about, is a culture of death. And it is hard. So, and things are even ramped up like never before. So we need more people who are willing to stand up and speak the truth with their lives and be willing to say things, tell the truth in a way that can be received uh, well, not in a violent way, not in a way that tries to divide us, but tries to bring us closer together. Uh, so take heart, take heart in these readings. They're intended to give us hope. Jesus knew that there would be difficulties. We hear that in the scriptures, but let's not do this alone. There, We have access to so many ways to get help. Uh, number one, we have the mass, the source and summit where we receive Jesus uh, in the Eucharist. We hear him proclaimed in the word. We see his presence in our community. We then can also go to the other sacraments, like anointing of the sick. If you know someone who is really ill, uh, contact our parish. I'll ha be happy to anoint them. Maybe if you can go to the church if you're right before a uh, surgery, uh, let me know. I will anoint you right after mass. We'll just sit you down. I'll pray with you in the other sacristy. But we also have confession, which is another way of healing. So those are three ways. The confessions are uh, after Friday Mass in the morning and every Saturday from 4 to 5 o'clock. And, um, and of course, you can call if you if you want and try to get an appointment. That's a little trickier, but those things are doable. So there's lots of ways that we can walk through this pilgrimage of life when struggling with all these difficulties. Uh, and. Make sure you're not doing it alone. Seek out people that you know that will encourage you. Pick up the phone or text somebody. Uh, I do the same thing. I seek out my brother priests and friends and people that I know, and I really appreciate their support when I struggle. And uh, coming to Holy Trinity, I'm just getting to meet new people and more people. And you've been also kind to me. I really appreciate that. Of course, I'd always ask, please pray for me and our pastoral staff as we uh, try to do our best in ministry. But again, pray for the people that are doing our funeral ministries, that is the coordinators for funerals and those who um, are sacristans, those who uh, are doing music, those who are doing the receptions. So it takes a little army for us to pull them off, but we do it so well. The Catholic Church has such a beautiful liturgy and the folks uh, here we have at Holy Trinity are just amazing. So pray for them. And if you happen to think that maybe you have the personality, the gentleness, the love of the liturgy and the, and the care for people who are um, who are dying or have, are um, grieving. Maybe this maybe you can be part of some of these ministries. I'm sure if you talk to the different people, we, we can figure out a place that might work for you because everyone is very different and very specialized. So folks, uh, as I mentioned, the, like that beautiful tree up there, things, you know, it's going to have its leaves dying. The wonderful thing about this backyard is just if I turn a little bit here, we also have an evergreen right there and the evergreen right there it reminds us of everlasting life so look at them together hmm? life has death but it also has eternal life and that's who we're called to be people who know that death hits, enters our world and suffering enters our world the people who are have our eyes fixed on the the prize and a thousand years from now hopefully 
I don't mean like we're going to live a thousand years here, but if you think in terms of a thousand years from now, that's our hope is eternal life, eternal life in heaven with our Lord, the angels, the saints, our family who've gone before us and other people. That'll be a big surprise, huh? Well, folks, I hope to see you at this weekend's mass. Be mindful. We've had some, uh, lots of parking lot uh, situations where it's almost full, right? This is a great dilemma. The numbers are coming back. I want to encourage you, though, to <laughs> make sure you can get a parking spot. Come early. Come early. And then uh, that'll make it a lot easier for you to get a parking spot. Uh, of course, you know, park around the neighborhood. And that's what we've done in the past. But uh, knowing that they are getting full, bundle up, stay dry and uh, and and warm. And I hope to see you at Mass. God bless you. Bye-bye.